Hey, Detroit. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Ashley Stevenson, the street reporter here in Studio 1452, right in the heart of downtown Detroit. And I'm sitting here with comedic great. He's been having me laugh. Literally couldn't even start the interview because he's so hilarious. I'm sitting here with none other than Mr. Michael Collier. Thank, thank you, you for thank coming. You for I'm so excited to meet you. Reporter. We're going to do it in the street, but it's raining. Right. It's rainy I'm outside. Sorry, you know, Michigan, we're, it's bipolar. It's our weird. Our it was so weather. cold last night, but it was warm during the day. Yeah, it's, that's how it is. You start off in the morning wearing like a snowsuit and you have to end it off in like a bikini. It's good weather for ducks. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here he is. Right. Oh. Should we introduce him as well? What's his name? They don't really like to give out too much information. He don't like to talk? His name is Chicken. Okay. Oh. Well, welcome, Chicken. Oh. Thank you for coming to the show. He's fabulous. <laughs> he is. So you're in town this weekend, right? So what are you doing? I'm not even here. You're not even here. Yes. Really? <laughs> uh, I'm doing, uh, it's a place called the Barn Barn Warehouse. Oh, whose warehouse is it? Poop. Burt's. 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 Burt. Burt's. Burt's. Burt's Warehouse. Burt's has a warehouse? Bird got a warehouse. I didn't even hear about that. I just found out. <laughs> so where do yes. we buy tickets to? Uh, Bird's Warehouse. Oh, apparently. No, that's not where you go to. You go to Comedy Detroit. <laughs> right. FunnyDetroit.com. Funny Which one is it? FunnyDetroit.com. FunnyDetroit.com. That's where you can get your tickets, he everybody. Makes, they tell you about Bird and everything. Yeah. <laughs> So I do want to talk about, I know you were born and raised in Chicago. Wait, we're still talking about birds. Okay. Six big shows, two Friday, two Saturday, <laughs> and two Sunday. You have six opportunities to miss me. Bring your mama, Pookie, and Run Run. It's going to be so good. I wish I was in the audience watching me. All right, go ahead. What were you you are hilarious. Thank no, you. I've been watching. So I got a chance to watch a couple of episodes of your Michael Collier morning, the morning show. show. Hilarious. Thank you. Oh, my God. It's so funny. But yeah. my favorite part is that every time you come on the screen, you have a different name. Oh, it's you, always, you saw that? A lot of people don't pay that no attention. I, that was the first thing I noticed because it's so silly. It's hilarious and quirky. And I don't know who comes up with it, but you guys are hilarious. I come up with everything. We you come, come up with everything? Swing. Everything you see on the show is what we have. We You're a comedic like, genius. We have, we have um, not a very large space. Right. And it's just a few of us. <laughs> okay. and we, I think we could relate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Michael, please. <laughs> Get some sense. <laughs> So good. It's a great interview. I think it's going very Studio well. 1452. Right here in the heart of downtown Detroit, the Michigan interview. Chronicle. You haven't <laughs> had an interview till you've come in here. Exactly. Street, street reporter. Right. Ex <laughs> exactly. And so I just want to talk about how long have you been doing comedy? I know you said you just got your name years. up. Yep. Yes. On uh, uh, the comedy store is to be on that wall is a legendary thing, and and it wasn't a whole lot of black folks names on there. So wow. it's a whole bunch of us that got our names on now, thanks to Guy Tory, mm -hmm. who's doing a documentary that Reginald Hutland is directing, uh, and uh, I think it's Kelsey Grammer's producing it. Wow! And it's called uh, Fat Tuesdays about how you go down there Tuesday, and all the brothers would come performing that club on yeah. Tuesday, and a lot of the giants uh, went through there. And then he uses considerable power yeah. to get our name on the wall, and it's really really good. We feel very honored about that. Yeah, so, yeah, you should be. I'm honored to just be sitting here with you right now. And so I do want to ask you, so yeah. what do you think, like, who right now would you say in the scope of your oh, comedic wait, the there really got a vaccination because he has coughed four times. <laughs> Jamel, if you wouldn't mind not coughing. Okay, I'm trying. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> he just needs a little coffee this morning. <laughs> a little tickle. Coffee for the coffee. Right, exactly. Oh! Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so who would you say is Michael Collier's like top five comedic geniuses? Alive and dead or just alive? No, you can do alive and dead. Most of them are dead. Okay. Okay. Uh, number one uh, for me is always going to be Richard Pryor. Absolutely. And and then Bernie Mac because Bernie Mac was my friend. Yes, and, he was. And he was a man. And you so, were on his show too. Um, yes, I did. I did. I did. You're right. I did yeah. this show. But he also came on mine. Remember, I had a yes. talk show called BT Life Melee. I do. He he was one of the big guests who came, and he had no air about it. He had no ego. He got me on Def Jam the first season. I didn't even know the thing existed. He insisted that they get me on that show. Wow. And he was a messy black men mm -hmm. are rare. Niggas. They everywhere. <laughs> you can open the gloves, probably a car for niggas and fall out. But black I'm gonna try men, that when I get in the car. Black men are rare and he's a black man. Yes. He had integrity. Everybody else was going to the club. We're going to strip clubs and stuff after 
He was going back to his room to get him some beans and cornbread and get on the phone with his wife. Wow. He was just a great, great man. He wouldn't step on nobody to get more than somebody else. He wouldn't do any of that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I really appreciate who he, who he was. That's why I love Barack Obama. Yeah. How he stands as a black man. Yeah. He stands his integrity. He stands his authenticity. Nigga, just, excuse me. Just <laughs> off again. It's like Jamil. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold it in. Hold your breath, please. No, we know you've been vaccinated. Wait, we do. We do know. Jamel has been vaccinated, everyone. No one okay, that so um so so yeah, so I would say those are like great, great top for me. Um the person I don't the person I won't say I know her as well as the artist, but I think Cat Williams. Is crazy. He's definitely funny. on my top crazy, five funny, as well. He's smart. hilarious. Eddie, said, Eddie Griffin is hilarious. Eddie, and you can't have a complete list without Dave Chappelle. Ooh, Dave Chappelle is the truth. Awesome. He's the truth. You know yeah. what? I, what I appreciate about your your form of storytelling, in addition to like Dave Chappelle's Cat Williams, is the authenticity between you you and your audience and where you came mm-hmm. from. And I think one of the best things about being a comedian is your storytelling. So like me as a journalist, I tell a story, but you know, I I can't make it that funny, you know, but listening to you guys, it kind of, I know I do my best. I do my best when it's not serious news. Right. (gasps) Yeah. (laughs) But what I love about you, you I do serious news occasionally. I haven't done it in a while because this is more my speed. Um, I think the last thing we just covered was Wednesday, and I did the one year uh, later from George Floyd, the murder of George Floyd. So it was a national RTM special project that we did. Yeah, that was good. That was important. That was very important because when you talk about black men, I feel I feel very much so uh, attached to that. You know, so I really had to make my voice known. Yeah, Yay. black woman that likes black men. Come on, give me a <laughs> Woo woo woo! <laughs> I cannot <laughs> this chicken. <laughs> So, but, um, so Cat Williams, Dave Chappelle, Bernie Mac, and Richard Pryor. Mm -hmm. These are all great. So where do you feel like the state of comedy is right now? We have a lot of new up and coming comedians. Illinois? That's where it stays. That's where it stays. Uh, actually, I, I think that, you know, someone asked that question earlier on the uh, TV show I was being interviewed on. I don't think that comedy changes. I think people try different things, but there's a constant to comedy. And Mm -hmm. that either you make people laugh or you don't. That's like people get on stage and they do like a five minute spot. You don't have to ask nobody if you're funny or not. Right. You know from the audience. If it's quiet, yeah. Oh, you know right away that it ain't funny. Right. It ain't working. You sweating like R. Kelly in the playground. (laughs) You don't have to worry (laughs) that it's right or wrong. You know it ain't working. If they laugh, (laughs) you know it's working. (laughs) Uh, you win, you know? <laughs> My chicken loves her laugh. Thank you, chicken. <laughs> he thinks it's authentic. Thank you, chicken, <laughs> Mr. Clare. Yeah, so I, I mean, people, some folks are mad at internet artists yeah. because they do a little comedy and they get a million people following right. before they get a TV show. So even if they're not trained and even if they don't know 30 minutes worth of material, who cares? They made it there. Right. They got there a different way than you. Mm-hmm. You're probably mad because you spent 15 years doing it and they came in the 20 minutes figured out how to get everybody to watch them. Now some of them don't sustain it. Oh, so I see that the coughing is actually contagious. In no, it's not contagious. Nobody is contagious in here. You can just cough two or three times. No, we can have the circle of life. Alan's a full-time employee. Oh, he's a full-time employee? Yes, okay, he's a host. Do much. He just, <laughs> No, he's just being I our support. You know what? The, the good thing to be a leader is like knowing when to serve. So Alan is a great servant leader. I think he knows when not to serve. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. Chicken loved that. He thought that was hilarious. I'm oh, sorry. Can we um, keep chicken? So you want to take chicken with everybody you? Everybody wants the chicken. Oh, we want chicken. I go on stage and people yell out, where the chicken? <laughs> And this chicken don't have nothing to do with it. So okay. Anyway, um, what was your question? Uh, we were talking about the state of comedy. You said it was Illinois. So if you get there, however you get there, you get there. That's right. on you. If you fail, because the audience start laughing, that's on you too. Failure is what teaches you. Wow. Winning is not what te- you don't learn nothing when you succeed. You you gain mm-hmm. things and stuff when you succeed, but you only learn when you fail, when you miss it, and you go, "Ooh, I don't want that to happen again." Right. You know, when you're in a room and nine hundred people ain't nobody laughing, you really go back and do your homework because yeah. you say, mm, "I can't just do this on yeah. the internet. I got to do something else or not." 
Yes. You know, or you just go back and do your internet stuff, internet stuff and get your crowds to come in. That boy, Justin Whitehead, mm -hmm. that's his name. He's the comedian you and I was talking about earlier yes. about laughing at the 600, my 600 pound life. He yes. sits in the room and laughs at it on TV. He's got a whole lot of followers. Right. And I was really prepared to see him not be that funny. I just didn't expect him to be that funny. Oh, he's hilarious. That boy's hilarious. Yes, he is. He's a scream. But a lot of stuff, you don't get to do it until you do it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, white folks was trying to stop uh, Barack Obama from getting in and his opponent, the idiot with the orange hair, will keep saying, well, he doesn't have experience. Yeah. And how do you get experience as a president without being president? <laughs> so it's stupid. Some stuff you don't learn unless you do it. Mm. You know, this comedy is a practitioner sport. Okay. It's not an observational sport. You got to do this one yeah. to get it right, to find the timing, to, to watch the guide your audience, know who's going to laugh at what, who, who's not going to laugh, who's going to be offended. And yeah. if you're offended, how to make a quick turn so they're not offended anymore. And now instead of being a butt of the joke, they're part of the joke and they're laughing with you instead of everybody laughing at them. You have to get in the mix and do that yeah. for that to happen. So if you don't know what you're doing, but you got the courage to get up and do it, yeah. I applaud that. Me too. That they'll keep on doing it. In a minute, they're going to get it. Because mm -hmm. they're going to get tired of people saying, well, that was terrible. Like on my morning show. Yeah. If you come on there and you ain't funny, woo! I it would hate to see the comments. a long walk back to your car. Oh, I talk about right on, oh, right on air. Right? I would say, oh, that was terrible. <laughs> that was terrible. You, you should quit. You know, I <laughs> write the, and I let them know before they come on the show. So it ain't but three minutes. Right. Be really funny or beware. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm coming. <laughs> Me and the chicken. We're gonna cook your goose. I would hate. I would hate to be on the other end of not of being told to beware if not being funny. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're gonna come to a comedian show, yeah, you, you should probably saying? be funny. Yeah, I don't think like that's like the top thing that you would need to be to come on your show is probably funny, yeah, right? You don't go on a, a vocalist show and then you can't sing. You hit the wrong notes and all that. Well, I mean, if you look at American Idol. But that's a whole different thing. Yeah. Because American Idol is about you trying to do your best. And we know that these are amateurs who are struggling and putting it together. Oh, and okay. Amazing, amazing fear and stress is involved. Yes. When you know a million people, I don't care who you are. When you know Eddie Murphy, when he walk out there and a million people watching, there's a little nervousness involved. There's a little in bit that. of pressure. So imagine somebody who is in Iowa. Yeah. Hoeing potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and on the side, they singing in the bar. You and, deal with this they, every day? <laughs> I don't see her every day. That's Sabrina. That's Dr. <laughs> Sabrina. That's my psychiatrist. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so, so you know they just, they lucked up and got in here. Yes. And now they don't usually sing in front of a dozen people. Right. And they're singing in front of three, four, five million. Yeah. It's nerve-wracking. You may tend to hit a note or two that's wrong. Just you a know, bit. They usually don't get all the way to the main stage when they're horrible, mm -hmm. except they do put some in as ringers because they want us to laugh at them. And they exactly. Want to go, oh, you can be better. You know, but at least they try. I, I ain't never mad at anybody to try. Nothing beats a failure like a try. Mm -hmm. You know, if you give it a really good try and you try long enough, you're going to get it. I think those are powerful words yeah. of wisdom. I do have a couple questions. Just one last question for you, though. One well, last question. Right. Well, well, I'll probably come up with another question. question for me. Um, my head mainly. Okay. Yeah. It's just a conversation. So I feel like you started in comedy 35 years ago. So now we're Jeez, in this kind of, it has been that long. Nice. Right. So 35 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Welcome back chicken. Um, so 35 years. How do you, how do you, <laughs> you really as a serious journalist okay. and a reporter, okay. you know, I'm, I'm composed. So it's in 30, 35 years uh -huh. of being in comedy. So now we're in this kind of technological, digital stage of life. You have your morning show on YouTube. You talked about uh, Justin is his last name. Justin Whitehead. 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 Yeah, Justin Whitehead. So how do you feel like opportunities of advancement have been provided for other comedians now with the uptick in social media and being on digital spaces like YouTube. How do you feel like it's benefited comedy? Do you feel like there's more spaces now for opportunity yes. to be seen? Tremendously. Mm -hmm. There's so many more opportunities now. You know, the internet has it, taught me a lot. It gave me a lot because of this pandemic. You know, you know the <laughs> pandemic. Uh, the pandemic has scared so many people. And like, I lost every job March 13th of last year. Wow. So I had gigs booked for eight months every weekend. Mm -hmm. March 13th, every comedy closed club close at the same day. Right. So Austin was gone. I could go home and cry like a little girl. Or I could pivot. 
and figure mm-hmm. out something else I can do. And that's what get, brought me to the morning show. Right. If that hadn't happened, I would never have the morning show. Wow. So now I have a whole new uh, form of income, another way to go. Then I add a second show. I do superstar interviews every Wednesday. I so do that. that. Yeah. And yeah. So I do Wyclef John, uh, Dougie Fresh, uh, Yolanda Adams. I had John Sally come on one day, and you know he's vegan. Oh, yeah. He has a, uh, he has a marijuana farm. Oh, His know. daughters have their own dispensary. Wow. So on that same show, I brought on Garrett Morris, who came on after them with a big old blunt, and he smoked a blunt and told jokes for an hour. <laughs> These opportunities I would have never had yeah. if I wasn't put in a position to have to find out what other stuff I can do. Mm-hmm. You know, then I do a show every Thursday, which we're moving to Wednesday. No, we're moving to Tuesday. So every Tuesday morning, I'm reading books to children. Yeah. So I'll read one book. I'll do two points by Shel Silverstein. Now I'll give away a puppet, never the chicken. Never the chicken. <laughs> and I'll give away books and it's, and, you know, to connect the children too, because kids hear everything that's going on. Yes, they listening do. They to CNN constantly negative news, and they know people dying, people are sick. There's orange hair fools still running around claiming on the brothers, yes. and people are frightened, <laughs> and they want to know if they're okay. Mom yeah. ain't gonna die, dad ain't gonna die, COVID ain't gonna get us because we're gonna do it the healthy way. Right. Go to the next thing. So talk about opportunities. So many comments. Like I could do Zoom now. I didn't know I could do this Zoom and get the Zoom money. Yeah. I do NAACP. I'll MC a function. They'll put the money. In my cash app. Wow. I do it in my living room. I got on my jacket, my shirt, my tie, my hat, butt naked from the waist down. <laughs> Please. They don't know. They don't see. They see me from the waist up. Exactly. I get through. I sit on the couch. I watch Law and Order. Yeah. You know, so the opportunities are there. Comics can get all over the place and be seen. People who normally would never platform. Yeah. Or get the platform. Justin got a platform because he does social media. That platform put him as my feature when I did comedy in Memphis at Chuckles. I saw him blown away. Put him on my morning show the next morning. Absolutely. And he was brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Made my show look better as well. You know? So, yeah. Tons of opportunities. I love that. Panic, yeah. uh, pivot instead of panic. Yeah. Those are powerful words of wisdom. You got it. And you it. are always fresh. I was going to say earlier, like, one thing about Chicagoans and Detroiters are, like, we have a certain swag when it comes to dressing. Mm-hmm. So, I love to see you, like, in your hats and your sunglasses. I mean, your glasses and your sunglasses. So, can we expect to see that? This weekend, well, we down at Birch well, we Warehouse. Going lunch. You're going to hats galore? Where? Say it loud. Hats galore. And if we don't find what we want, where are we going? Henry the Hatter. Henry the you got to go to Henry the Hatter. I'm come in this town and not be sharp. Detroit dress. Okay. If they don't do nothing else, they're going to be sharp. Now, we'll boo you for some outfits. You know my judge, Craig cool. Strong? Oh, uh, yes, Craig I do. Craig will wear an orange hat with an orange suit and orange alligator shoe. Absolutely. And yeah, some people think he's a clown because of the way he dressed, but no, he's a serious he, No, he is. He gave one guy a hundred. You know you're not in this interview. Okay. He oh, gave sorry. one guy a hundred and sixty-two okay. years plus life. You know what I mean? Yes. That means even after he died, you still gotta go he had to, to jail. do 162 years. He said, but judge, I can't do that much time. <laughs> judge said, you just do as much as you can. Do as much as you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was certainly a pleasure. Please tell the people you tell me I'm doing two to. segments. This ain't no two segments. This was both of them mixed no, together. No, that was a break. Okay, that was just a break. Oh, when he was coughing, was that the break? Right, I think that was oh, the start no. of the new segment when we, because we're probably gonna. I can tell you a joke about coughing before we go. Please. Okay, all right. Okay. So this guy. Walking down the street, man, his own business, right? Right. So he walked past the cemetery. As he passed the cemetery, a hearse comes out, start driving alongside the brother. Yes. The brother didn't think nothing of it until the hearse took off and the casket, the coffin, rolled out the hearse <laughs> and started rolling towards the brother. Right. The brother started bagging up. The coffin kept rolling towards the brother. The brother turned, started walking. The coffin kept rolling towards the brother. The brother started jogging. The coffin kept rolling towards the brother. The brother took off running, ran to his house, ran up the front stairs, went in the front door, slammed it, and locked it. The coffin rolled up the stairs, knocked down the door. Brother ran down the hall, made right to the oh. window bathroom, closed the door, locked it. The coffin rolled down the hall. Brother opened up the medicine cabinet, grabbed a bottle of cough syrup, threw it at the coffin, <laughs> and the coffin stopped. Please, Jamil, get a oh. bottle of cough syrup, please. Some of y'all not going to get that joke till like Tuesday. Right, Fabulous. exactly. Okay. It's a great joke. And I'm going to be. So make sure y'all come to my show. Is that... uh? Bert's well, Warehouse. Bert got a warehouse. You got a show Bert. tonight at 7.30, two tomorrow at 7.30, 9.30, one on Sunday. The tickets are on funnydetroit.com. That's all wrong. We have two tonight. Two yes. tomorrow and two on Sunday. Not four shows like right. I said for a TV show today on Fox. <laughs> no, two today, two tomorrow. 
two Sunday at six opportunities to miss me. It's gonna be off the chain. Bring your mama and Pookie in them. I can't wait to see you. Thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you, Michael. The chicken loves you. Thank you. I love your chicken this too. Really Great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Too? Huh? Johnson Johnson. No, that's not me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.